Top five, top five, top five. Yeah, girl. You ready to do this? You ready to count this thing down? We're doing the top five, huh? Yeah, let's set it off with one, two, Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Ranked Top 5 List of Stuff That Don't Matter. I'm your supreme leader, Tong La, from outer space, here to send you all the good message of the pod cavern. That's right, everyone, with just five easy installments of $1,000 a month and uh, whatever comic book paraphernalia you want to hand me as well, I can get you in. I can get you into the club and you can rise to the higher level of existence if you just join me today. You know, that's what today's episode's all about. We're trying to get you to that next level, okay? And I couldn't do that without my crew here, my crew that I have cherry picked just from around the pod cavern because I knew they had what it takes to be part of this club here. And I want to introduce my first guest who is, uh, let's say, a level three officer in the pod (laughs) cavern uh, waiting. to. There's like eight levels in the pod cavern, only level three, but that's pretty high. He's been paying a lot of money to me privately. Uh, Stanley Philippe, everyone. Yeah, not not so private anymore. Thanks for spoiling my... uh... My secret there, Tung, yes, I am a member of the pod cult. I've been a loyal member. I do not join any other cults unless they pay me $1,000 a month, plus all the comic paraphernalia you can think of. And speaking of cool cult members, our other guest is somebody who is not only a grad of the greatest university in Canada, but also a grad of a second tier, not so cool and impressive school in New York City. It's Patty! NYU, whatever. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Who cares? Nothing compares to the best cult of all, the pod cult. Uh, I have been a loyal member for many years. And if anything, Tongue is making so much money off of my so much money. dedication. <laughs> and if Stanley is a level three member, I am a level platinum elite times ah. 10 member. <laughs> yeah, that is a really exclusive membership. Patty's this close to getting onto the UFO spaceship. <laughs> Everyone. Thank you so much. I did literally beg to be on the pod again, so really excited to be here. And I'm going to introduce our next guest, who I just found out has a dog named Finley. <laughs> Updates all around. It's the one and only Stephanie McLean. Hey, everybody. I'm so excited to be on the Pod Cavern once again with my beautiful, beautiful crew here. It's been a while since we've all seen each other's wonderful faces, and it's really bringing back some great feelings of nostalgia. But that's not why we're here. No. I'm really here so that I can audit out my engrams, become an <laughs> operating thetan, and really push off all that luciferin bullshit and transcend myself into another dimension. That's it. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for making that clear. Of course, it is nice to see you all, but let's be real here. We're here to talk about cults today. Top five cults is the episode. And actually, I was taking a look today. This exact crew did top five conspiracy theories Mm. back in Mm. June 2nd of 2021. Wow. It's been a long time coming since this crew has assembled for this. But when I forget, it was just it wasn't even that long ago. But I was just like, man, I miss this crew so much. And this episode made the most sense. I mean, we just did conspiracy theories. Let's talk about more fucked up shit, you know? Yes. (laughs) I was also re-listening to that, and we just overthought every single conspiracy theory. So I'm just, I'm so excited for how we're going to dissect cults. Yeah, me too. Because they're just so messed up, like, on a totally different level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say the last 24 hours of research, because I don't do any more than that, (laughs) has been... uh, let's just say concerning, depressing a little bit as well. And uh, I I might need a hug after 
<laughs> after this episode. We'll see how it goes. But I want to go right into the ground rules of today of top five cults. And I think one that I'd like to put to the group here, and we, we talked about this offline already, but I want to make sure that people know that it isn't the best cults, you know? Top five cults doesn't mean this is the best one. This is the one that I want to be part of. This is the <laughs> one that's going to make waves in the in the industry or whatever it is. It's just the ones that I think are the most interesting to us, the ones that have like the more fascinating stories, that kind of thing. Another thing about cults is I, I wrote down a definition somewhere. And just so people kind of get the idea, because I think uh, cult is a type of word that has kind of entered the mainstream in in a big way, right? A lot of people are like, oh, you're part of the air fryer cult now? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's that's the zeitgeist. Yeah, it's not what we're really talking <laughs> about here. We're talking about like actual cults, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but the definitions that I found here, and maybe we can work with it. Definition, a system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. A cult is usually a small group or bigger one devoted to a person, idea, or philosophy. Some cults pose as religion, which I think is our, let's say, somewhat gray area. If you can argue that it's a cult, we're not going to fight you too much on it, right? But I think a lot of cults don't deem themselves as a cult. They would be like, Mm -hmm. listen to me, Mm -hmm. we're not a cult. We're actually a really highbrow religion that Mm -hmm. you're going to have to pay a lot of money for, (laughs) that kind of thing. Um, Yeah, in my research, I saw that a lot of the times the articles wouldn't even call them cults. They would call them new religious movements. Mm -hmm. So I think there's this like movement to start calling cults that instead, which I think is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, What other ground rules do we want to go through here? Gosh, well, I guess I guess one would be to not nominate actual religions as cults because there could be that conversation that people do think that religions have cultish behavior, and you know I'm, I'm trying to keep my job and, and still get paid. So from that perspective, maybe we can keep those ones like off the map. For I now. think I think you are mostly correct in the way that I do think, and I'm not sure if it will come up, but. I do think there are definitely some religions that are like actually cults, right? Uh, Absolutely. Yes. Like, yes. So yes. I think yes. I think those ones will rightly be kind of uh, targeted, if you will. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then there I are have, some. I have a few of those. Yeah. Just to be clear. I do too. Okay, yeah. 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 yeah good, good. But I I think there are some like let's just say like Buddhism. <laughs> like I don't need you to. We, no. we won't need to do those ones because there's so many other, I think, interesting cults out there that we can explore mm-hmm. without having mm-hmm. to, you know, attack someone's religion. And let, let's say the mainstream, like with people yeah. that is like it's accepted that this religion is a thing. And there's tons of like religions out there that have pretty fucked up stuff. But we'll we'll try to we'll stay away from it until top five religions, right? (laughs) (laughs) I would not touch that one. I I joined in Carleton University. I was like, oh, religion class. This sounds cool. I can learn so much about people. I went to the first class and then never came back again. (laughs) I know that I definitely went to that class and I shouldn't have kept going. (laughs) You made the right choice. It's boring. It's boring. Here's a few that I have here for ground rules. It doesn't have to be from just North America. Yep. There's a ton mm-hmm. of cults out there. I think of the most popular ones that are, you know, posted on the Googs is just American ones. And I'm sure we're going to get a ton of those, but it doesn't have to be. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I think the other thing is we don't usually have disclaimers at the beginning of episodes because, you know, people who listen to this podcast know that we come from a good place and that like we're usually a jokey bunch. And like it's all it's all the perspective of normal people, quote unquote. But I will say that the stuff that we might be talking about some shit is pretty fucked up. So if that is concerning to you, then I want you to know that in advance. I want you to know that if you are feeling kind of weird about it, then it's okay. Come back to us later. I swear we're funny too, <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, and yeah, there are some like cults that like have like suicide type of stuff that is in there. So if you're a person who's very sensitive to that stuff, then I just want you to know that in advance. Anything else that we want to go through? Just, yeah, be respectful, but understanding that there is other uh, 
fucked up things. I say be respectful to our audience, but don't respect each other <laughs> on this call. <laughs> I'm coming also, for blood. Well, one more thing would be if you are a member of a cult and you're listening and we didn't shut out your cult, maybe let us know because there may be space in a future episode where we could actually shout you out if your cult doesn't meet the different categories i'm sure we're going to explore in this one if it's like a nice call maybe it's a cult of like a nice i don't know ponies you're on the pony cult and you don't like harm said ponies then we might want to hear from you yeah so that that's all yeah make sure you dm tongue specifically yeah yeah yes. exactly <laughs> yeah uh, just uh email us at uh my cult wasn't on the ranked episode at podcavern.com <laughs> that will actually Perfect. work by the way so if you want to try to do that then that email will work um shall we get into it <laughs> yes let's do, it. let's do it all right just like every episode of ranked we're gonna go around three times nominating three nominations each making a master list of 12 and whittling that down to a top five cults list here we go i could not start an episode on cults without shouting out and making fun of a religion i'm sorry that a lot of people do let's just say a lot of peculiar people practice let's let's start naming some names here who do we got john travolta we have <laughs> danny masterson bad man <laughs> elizabeth moss tom cruise seinfeld it's scientology everyone <gasps> Excellent. This is yes. my number one. This is my number one. Starting out strong. Listen, Scientology is an interesting one because it is very much in the current, I don't know, ballpark of quote unquote religions. And there is a good group of people who do believe in Scientology. But I yeah. think... It's hard for me. Like this is the this is the nomination I was thinking about when you were talking about don't go after other religions, Stanley. I'm gonna go after yeah. Scientology because honestly, Scientology is bullshit. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's complete bullshit. I have done so much reading and watching of videos on YouTube, documentaries, <laughs> reading people's blogs who have escaped, all of that about Scientology for years. And it, it never fails to absolutely amaze me the depths that these people have uh, gone in terms of the administration, but then also the sadness of the other people on the, the receiving end of all of it, because they're just being preyed upon their their goodwill, which is the sad part. Yeah, for sure. I think like the one thing, the saving, not the saving grace, because that's too much, that's too generous, but I was going to say it doesn't do any physical harm to people the way some of these other cults do, at least publicly i've not seen that uh so at least that's good but it does gouge people for of their money totally and you're okay let me back it up here Pe for those of you who don't know uh scientology was created by a science fiction writer l ron <laughs> hubbard in the early 1950s i'm pretty sure and yeah he holds the guinness world record for the most published works by one author standing at 1084 I you know I forgot real quickly. I forgot how well researched stuff is. And I'm feeling great because I'm like, if I don't know something, she will fill in the blank. So it's great to have that safety net that is stuff. I agree. Thank you, stuff. I, it's a thing that I do consciously on episodes, Stanley, is always get the guests that are way more smarter than I am and that do the research for my own podcast. That I host. That's, that's why you're the leader. That's, that's why you're the cult leader. I am Xenu, the supreme leader. <laughs> and I, I won't get into a deep dive on to everything because we can talk about a long time about Scientology. <laughs> There's just a lot of things going on. Uh, there's Thetans, which is the soul, I'm pretty sure. And there is this level of that we're trying to rise above and like basically be taken in by or be approved by Xenu. And there's like a bunch of levels, right? There's a bunch of levels yeah. that you have to get to. There's auditing that happens as well. So it's a practice in Scientology where they basically measure how pure you are. And you do it by uh, holding on to these. It look, they look like nunchucks uh, attached to like a meter. They're called, it's called an e-meter. And this this fake ass meter will tell you how good of a person you are basically <laughs> and it's always gonna say you're bad and that you have to pay money for you to be good uh, Steph did I yeah. get that right uh to an extent yeah sure. yeah yeah I'm trying to give the <laughs> cliff notes extent. version yeah I actually did no research on Scientology because I knew somebody would bring it up and so oh I am truly shocked right now like is Xenu an overlord or like yeah. an alien god 
So this is the whole thing that's just blows my mind about Scientology. So yeah, you have to do like this e-meter and determine if you've got these engrams on you and your uh, your goal is to become clear of these engrams, which are just basically pain and trauma from your past that's still affecting you today. And then once you're clear, you get to work to on the bridge to total freedom. So once again, you think that you're clear, but then you find out that you have all of these things called body thetans on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's from when Xenu, the overlord, had to blow up basically a few planets because they were just overpopulated. He threw these spirits to Earth, Tijiak as he called it. They blew up in a volcano and their souls and just remnants of them literally globbed on to people. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're trying to get rid of. But that is what you don't find out until you've paid millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. So it's basically just like not knowing what the doctrine of Christianity is before starting to practice it. So you have no idea what you're actually working towards or practicing while you're doing it. You're just handing over money it's crazy uh, you can't tell me after listening to all of that though you can't tell me that that's not like the next plot of the next like guardians of the galaxy movie <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly going to be their next challenge and adventure to, yeah to defeat xenu <laughs> yeah. he's a real yeah that literally sounds made up <laughs> that's insane yeah, it is wild. I think Scientology, I mean, it, is, it gets made fun of a ton, uh, especially like on South Park and that kind of stuff. But there is, uh, what's her name? She was from King of Queens. Uh, yeah. Leah Remini. That's right. Yes. She released, uh, there's a bunch of like Scientology documentaries out there. But recently, Leah Remini, she was from the church herself. And she basically, she did the whole thing. And now she's come out with like a series i believe that kind of mm -hmm. goes through of why what scientology is and why it's bad and why it like it it, it traps you like a lot of these cults do it traps you into be thinking you need it a lot and then the people around in the the cult itself convince you to stay or they they become very secretive about stuff too right so they try to like brush a lot of stuff under the rug mm -hmm as well and try to make you not like reveal the secrets of Scientology because the whole Xenu thing was not known to people until like a former member was like Xenu this is a thing and everyone's like yeah. making fun of it rightly so mm -hmm. but that was not supposed to come to the public people were not supposed to find out that secret so no. yeah kind of wild y'all y'all can I confess something yeah are you a Scientologist I I went to a church a Scientology church okay. in Vancouver. And cool. And How was I it? went I went through the intro process. So it's basically you do this like I think it's like a 150 question questionnaire thing to learn more about you step to your point to learn more about who you are and your your past traumas and everything. And then you meet with somebody and then they kind of go through your results and they go, uh-huh, okay. So this was interesting. This is good. You're fucked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I, I was like, I'm like, wow, I thought I was a good person. Like, no, you are on a path to fucked upness. You need yeah. to do this thing, this thing, that thing. Join here. Do that. And I, obviously, like, they ended right then and there. And we went for, like, as a joke to figure out what exactly was going on. But it's wild because I didn't do any research afterwards. And it's wild to think that, like, they use that to really cultivate and plant and develop mm -hmm. that attachment but creating so much guilt about your past, your present, and your future. future. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, everything. It's, it's a while. It's really interesting. Wait yeah. a minute. Is therapy also a cult? Because that's just, that's literally, that's literally, that's your intro call with a therapist. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you're using an e-meter in your uh, intro therapy call, then you're you're calling the wrong therapist, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's move on. We'll talk, I'm sure, much more about Scientology later, but let's uh, move it to Stanley. What do you got? Okay, so yeah, so I just want to preface this by saying a lot of my cult nominations uh, were based off of my consumption of Netflix documentaries. So, nice. so these are going to be very popular, I think very that's well okay. known, yeah, uh, and hopefully interesting. Okay, so I'm going to start with the one that I think we all know and hate, Nexium. Damn mm. it! Damn it! Yes, yes. Okay, so if you've been living under a rock for the last four years, five years, which is totally fine. Um, Nexium was founded in 1998 by this guy, Keith Rainier. Keith Rainier, just your typical computer programmer, 
Uh, he founded a multi-level company and a marketing company and then thought, you know what I can do? I can inspire a lot of people to become better versions of themselves. And so he decided to create this organization with Nancy Salzman. Fuck you, Nancy. Fuck you, Keith. Anyway, uh, sorry. sorry <laughs> that. Um, so they created this uh, organization that was going to help people become much, much better version of themselves. And it, it started to really create a lot of buzz. People were loving the seminars and they got some fairly big names to join the group, including um, Smallville co-stars Kristen Crook and Allison Mack. So through this beautiful, uh, loving organization, Keith and Nancy decided that they would name themselves Prefect and Vanguard and offered this program called the ESP or Executive Success Program. And they, again, have all these awesome self-improvement things. And Keith was really well known for not only being a great speaker, but an amazing volleyball player. And I think it was through that volleyball game that he was able to, how do I say this, charm his followers into, you know, really, really negative situations. And it culminated in this group within the group called DOS. And DOS was this really horrible offset of this organization where they basically created female sex slaves. And Allison Mack was like the side leader of DOS. So I'm not going to go into too much more than that. We could talk more about it. But basically, he fucked up. Members of the group realized that this was really, really bad. They decided to fight against Nexium. And he actually got arrested in 2017, I believe. And then in 2019, was found guilty on a bunch of charges, is now sentenced to 120 years in prison. It's just a really horrific experience for so many of these members. I mean, it got to the point where they, some of them got branded as part of this DOS kind of program. And so I think Nexium is a cult that we need to dissect, reject, and destroy, and hopefully rank high on this uh, podcast. Well, Steph, what did you find on this cult? <laughs> <laughs> what are we missing here? <laughs> um, okay, so I found quite a bit. Uh, Nexium is definitely one of those docs that you've seen on Crave, Netflix, the whole thing. Is that I, the I vow? Really, is that the one? That's the vow. Yeah, okay. exactly. There's so many of oh. them now. <laughs> There's so There's many. CBC so many. also has a great podcast about Nexium. They actually talk to one of the women who had to like joins the executive program talks about leveling up and then talks about like the branding ceremony Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. having to take like pictures of herself to be used Mm -hmm. as collateral it's so messed up hearing it from an actual person anyways listen to the podcast (laughs) (laughs) yeah absolutely like it it was really really scary just to see how easily these people were able to be, I guess, entrapped is the word, just in the entire program itself, because it really was supposed to be a make yourself better, do it yourself, make, you know, kind of program. And he just really, once again, took advantage of everybody's <laughs> goodwill for that. But yeah, DOS was quite an interesting pyramid scheme, if you really think of it as that. And mm. the idea that he was forcing his people to self-recruit within their own group, but then also completely distancing himself and saying that it was kind of a sorority that was created by these women when he was actually the head of all of it. So instead of taking that responsibility, just pushing it away. (laughs) Fuck that guy. All right. Well, uh, I was going to say great nomination. It is. It's a great (laughs) nomination. Bad cult. (laughs) Uh, Let's go to Patricia. What do you got? Okay, so I am going to tell you about this cult called Love Has Won. Have you guys heard about it? I'm not. Okay, I'm seeing question marks. Yes. That makes sense. Of course, Steph. Steph, Steph, Of course, Steph. (laughs) You don't, yeah. (laughs) Okay, um, I will try and keep this brief, but I honestly, I don't know how to keep this brief because this cult is just so complicated and the things that happened are so complicated. So there's there's this woman, Amy Carlson, She grew up very normal, straight-A student, but then in her adult life, she starts developing an interest in, like, New Age philosophy. She starts joining those chat rooms. One of them is called lightworkers.org, where she meets this man, Amareth White Eagle, is his (laughs) online name. His IRL name is just Robert. 
um, <laughs> good old Bob. <laughs> and Bob convinces her that she's this divine being. And then Amy starts experiencing like paranormal phenomena. Anyways, fast forward a couple years in 2007, she leaves her third husband, her children, her manager job at McDonald's to link up with Bob in Colorado and start the Galactic Federation of Light, which ends up becoming called Love Has Won. Basically, she comes to be known as Mother God, and then Amareth is Father God, except he's not the only Father God. Basically, she like kind of goes through men, and each man is the new Father God, depending on if he suits whatever goals she has. And her teachings were centered on just very interesting philosophy that she is the 534th incarnation of a 19 billion year old deity called Mother God, and that she was destined to lead exactly 144,000 believers out of the superficial reality of our 3D world into a fifth dimensional plane of existence. <laughs> and those who would be left behind would be destroyed, and then their energies would be recycled into the sun. We love an eco-friendly cult. <laughs> <laughs> Her other <laughs> incarnations included Jesus, Cleopatra, nice. Joan of Arc, and of course, Marilyn Monroe. Of, of course. course, who else? Jesus and Marilyn Monroe, like that just feels obvious. She was also at some point the queen of the mythical ancient city of Lemuria before its violent fall. When she was the queen, Donald Trump was her father. <laughs> and she would also regularly seek counsel from the Galactics, who were a team of spiritual ambassadors made up of celebs that were deceased, like Robin Williams, John Lennon, Michael Jackson, except I think Robin Williams was her number one mentor. Yeah, her go-to. He came up, yeah, he was the one that came <laughs> up the most. And obviously, as this billion-year-old deity, she had an enemy called the Cabal, who are this shadowy global organization. Boo, think Illumin boo. Think Illuminati, but worse. And Also, they... the Guardians of the Galaxy will fight them in the next movie. <laughs> oh, but 100%. Actually, I'm sure Marvel is listening to this to get ideas. Oh, yeah. Marvel's uh, for sure listening to this podcast. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um. So this shadowy organization is determined to keep humanity at a low vibrational state so we don't transcend. And in this current life, they've tried to assassinate her over 600 times. And they are described as minions. And you guys are going to love this. They're a group of reptilians. Shout out to the first oh, pop course. Yes, yes, we love reptiles. <laughs> yes. We love reptiles. And they're tied to the Illuminati. And they just believe in like a number of conspiracy theories. One of them is that 9-11 and that the Holocaust were hoaxes. They actually believe that Hitler's true intention was to serve the light and trigger warning. Maybe skip this part. They claimed that Jewish people wanted everyone else to do the work and take the money. So concentration camps were to teach them how to work, which... Is no brainer. Oh my yeah. gosh. Wow. Uh, they would live stream for hours on YouTube with the followers. The mother would live stream. The father would live stream. They would answer questions, jokes, share teachings. And then the mother would share her updates on the latest battles with the cabal, like each time they tried to assassinate her. And members weren't allowed to drink or do drugs, except Amy was a really heavy drinker. And then when she would get really drunk, she would get super erratic and very aggressive. Anyways, eventually Amy's family literally reaches out to freaking Dr. Phil to do an <laughs> intervention. They go live and they were, it turns out they were worried about her. She had lost an insane amount of weight because naturally Robin Williams told her that the max weight she could get to was 103.1 pounds. And she was also taking colloidal silver in insane amounts because she believed there were health benefits, which a lot of people do believe that there are health benefits to that. But she was taking so many, so much of it that her skin turned bluish gray. It was crazy. The pictures are nuts. Yeah, the pictures are like very uncomfortable to see. So they are, you know, that's like, a choice. Are, are we you... talking like, are we talking about Smurf blue or Avatar blue? We need to know what kind of blue we're dealing like with. Like a middle. Yeah, like okay. very gray blue. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Avatar yeah. blue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> grayer, but grayer. So anyways, finally, April 2021, her follower, this is where things get like 
really messed up. Her followers start posting these weird messages like, mom is ascending tonight, woohoo. And then <laughs> saying like, mom is fighting the good fight for us. She's just resting. So her family like obviously starts panicking, calls the police, sends an ambulance, but the ambulance gets rejected, turned away. And then finally a tip comes into the police that she's actually passed away. And this is where they can find her body. And then when they get there to where her body is, they are shocked by what they see. They find Amy's body in a mummified state, oh my in a sleeping bag, wrapped in Christmas lights. <sighs> She'd probably been dead for some time. Like, they don't know how long, but her eyes had been removed and her face was filled with glitter. Like, they had created yeah. a shrine out of her body. She was mummified. Yeah, it was very gross. And not oh. only that, but there were two children that were present on the no. property. So the people who were there, there was like seven adults who were were there when they found the body. They were obviously arrested and charged for abuse of a corpse and child abuse. Yeah. Anyways, that's everything I could find. Uh, <laughs> Steph, did I miss anything? <laughs> <I'm all> checking. <laughs> yeah. You guys are hilarious. Uh, no, not according to my research, no. Yeah. Wow. I know that was thorough. very thorough. extensive. Thorough. Very. Oh I my fell God. down a really big rabbit hole. Because I just felt like there was no end to the to the to the going. lore, to the to the doctrine, to the beliefs. Yeah. Did you did you clear your your search history? Because I'd be <laughs> no. worried if well, you didn't. It, you know, I your should. search history just say love has won. Oh, that's that's kind of cute. What's, oh, that's nice. That's, that's, that, that's, I do. I like love. Sweet. Yeah, great. I love love. <laughs> we all love love. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's um. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about it more we'll later. We'll talk about that more. I don't know what else is. I think that's going to be the end of everything. Every time someone says something, I'm just going to be like, yeah, that's fucked up. That's yeah. yeah, pretty much. Uh, Steph, what fucked up thing do you want to talk about next? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's talk about something called Heaven's Gate. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, yes. I was waiting for I, this. Yeah. This was a small but mighty cult. At the height, there was only 39 followers. Their main area was in like California, New Mexico, and and the leader was uh, Marshall Applewhite, who was actually a university professor. So he really believed that the human body was just a temporary vessel that would have to be discarded in order to reach the next level, which was heaven or paradise, which is very similar to Scientology and what L. Ron Hubbard believed you had to transcend your body in order to get to the, the next state. So he really believed that higher beings lived in a kingdom and that they were sent down to earth in human bodies to guide everyone to the right path. And he believed that he was one of those people to do exactly that. So there were three ways that you could ascend into the kingdom level above human. So either you get picked up by a Tila spacecraft. So that's T-E-L-A-H. Oh, yeah, that's I can't right. remember what yeah it's a teal i can't remember what that's supposed to stand for now it's like I the, I evolutionary, oh, the evolution yeah. level above human yeah, yeah that's it yeah so and then you be you're transported to the next level you either experience an accidental or natural death or you discard your human body by committing suicide at a specific time and that's basically what these people decided which to is do. wild because the second one is just like you just experience a natural death so like, yeah you why, can just live, you can just a life. live your life and, and then enjoy, go <laughs> and then go and still be part of this whole thing. But no, we're really going to make sure that we're going to choose the last option. Mass the worst, suicide. Yeah. yeah. The worst one possible. So basically they bought this mansion in Santa Fe that they called the monastery where most of these members resided to learn about this uh, religion or this, I don't know, ideal. They ended up making a lethal mixture of phenobarbital mixed with applesauce, pudding and vodka. And over three days, they all in groups of 15 15 and 9 i think they took this mixture laid down in bed and just went to sleep and after the people had passed then those who were still living they came in they put uh, purple blankets on them and that was it until the very last few people took the mixture before they actually did all of this they filmed all these videos to say why they were doing what they were going to do and then they were sending it off to people to actually watch and listen to and so one of these guys actually did that and he sent it to one particular person who ended up going to the mansion and finding all of these bodies and he called it in as an anonymous tip to say that there's been a mass suicide crazy i didn't really know too much about this it yeah. seems so simple and it's so small and it just was 
very effective. I watched uh, a, a bunch of that today and it was depressing, like it all is. But very. <laughs> it was like the videos are really, I guess use the word interesting because these people like truly believed in this. Like everyone in the cult and cults usually do. But it is nuts because they're basically saying why they're about to go kill themselves and that it's okay. And yeah, it's fine. It's all good. And like, you know, people might be concerned about this and that and this video. And, and they're like using logic and reason to be like, hey, it's fine. Like, this is what we want. But like, yikes, you know, like the, the end result is like clearly yeah. you're, you're, it's, it's suicide. There is a, a few interesting tidbits that I found funny about this, this story. If you're going to find some humor into this, one is they all, when they, um, went to sleep and they had like plastic bags over their heads and like a purple like blanket over their themselves too that the survivors put on them after they passed away is that they were all wearing matching Nike shoes. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was like interesting. And the reasoning was because they were on sale. That's what I (laughs) thought. That's that's why to be economical when you're dying. Yeah. So they're like black and white Nike shoes. They look nice, but they're on sale. So we chose that one. And, (laughs) There's another funny thing, and they all bought alien abduction insurance. I don't uh, get this. So what it was, it protects you from abduction, impregnation, and death by aliens. It paid out by, I think it's a million dollars. Yeah. For this insurance. Who is providing this? I know. So who, <laughs> That's just it. Yeah. Who who's underwriting that? this? Someone did. <laughs> Can you imagine Manulife just has this as a product? Yeah, you want you want what? Uh, Jim, go pull this. I don't know. Write something down. They'll they'll believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I also I also just can't imagine like uh, you know this cult with like a Costco card, just like oh Nike shoes and Costco are on sale. Let's go. Yo, dude. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, and then yeah, they were trying to. Um, Time the their deaths by a comet, right? Step. It was like a specific oh, yeah. comet. It, that's right. I forgot that whole part that buried the lead. So yeah, there was this Haley Bop comet, which at that time was going to be the biggest and brightest that they had ever seen. And this guy truly believed that there was an UFO trailing behind the comet. Yeah. And so he was ready to take the members of the cult to the higher kingdom, basically by hitching a ride. I'm assuming yeah, onto that that's that what it UFO. Was. Yeah, because yeah. like everybody knew that they were going to die eventually and they just had to wait for like the the go ahead from the, yeah. the guy and the guy's like that comet looks pretty pretty good yeah, good reason i think it's it <laughs> I, think, I think we got it guys <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't well, it suck if you join like yesterday or whatever and you're like oh i guess i'm uh, i guess i'm going oh. out tomorrow <laughs> yeah. oh I'm man this. yeah oh, <laughs> yeah and they like all um some of them like they cut off their balls and like all that other stuff just to like it's the whole like we got to be pure we can't yeah, have any yeah. sexual temptation. Like a lot of these cults are like that too, where it's just like, you, well, it's it's one or the other. It's like you don't have any sexual desire or you're free to have as much sex as much as, much yeah. as, as, yeah, as, as you want, want yeah. with whoever, yeah. which is always concerning. Uh, let's go to round two. <laughs> round two. How's everyone feeling? You wash your hands a little bit from all that? I think I do because it's going to get even darker. Here we go. My <laughs> next nomination. I don't know if it's darker. It's not a competition of what's darker, yeah. <laughs> but it is dark. Heaven's Gate was my next nomination, so thank you for taking that. I have more. I'm going to take it outside the U.S., go somewhere else. We're going to go to Japan. You might have heard about mm. this. I'm sure Steph has. Steph knows everything in this world. <laughs> <laughs> it is the OM, A-U-M. The, Never uh, heard of it. Oh, oh what? Man. That was going to be one of mine. Okay, I think oh, I might have to do man. some chat gpt in the break. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, it's a Japanese cult. It was uh, by Master Asaraha Shoko. Om Shinrikyo was the full name of the cult, but people just called Om, A-U-M. And it started as like a yoga school initially. And the teachings was a combination of Buddhism and Hinduism and Christianity. And there's like a whole thing of like, you know, the leader himself, uh, the Asahara Shoko. He claims that he was the embodiment of God, like they all do. And obviously he needs money. Like they all do. Um, but there was more to this. The, the reason why this is a little bit different than the previous ones that kind of fit this mold is that he 
basically there was like a, a gas terrorism that he inflicted in Japan, which was a huge deal because terrorist stuff in Japan, uh, much rarer to see compared to like the U.S. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the reaction was just like a lot more like, "Whoa, this is this is crazy." So at its height, there was. 50,000 members of this of, of this cult, which is quite a lot. They were preparing for war. They were trying to take over the government. But a uh, thing that they were trying out was to use gas tactics. I think it was, uh, what is it called? Sarin gas or something like that. But essentially, on March 20th, 1995, members of the OM left five bags filled with a toxic nerve agent on three Tokyo trains during rush hour. They put them in basically like rolled up newspaper. And the way that they activated it was like they punctured holes and they ran off the the subway or the train. And then people started choking and throwing up. 13 people died because of the attack. 5,800 people were injured. Uh, As months went on, like there was more attempts of gas attacks on other subway stations, but those ones failed, uh, luckily. And eventually what happened was, I think this is really interesting, was members of like seven members were executed including the, uh, the the leader himself, Asahara. And the reason why that's interesting is because they were granted the death penalty. And that was in like 2018. And like the death penalty in general is not really much of a thing <laughs> these days. Uh, <laughs> and in Japan, it's like used at the most, like it has to be fucked up. It has to be fucked up for them to like be like, no, we're going to kill you and execute you and let people know that you're, you're a bad person and you're going to die. Uh, so... Yeah, that's that <laughs> cult. And um, I think there was another interesting fact was that th- this is a little fun little light in this dark story was there was uh, somebody like a doctor who was like part of like uh, infected by the, the initial gas and he learned about this gas. And then when he kind of saw that like this was starting to pop around everywhere and like these people were going to keep trying to use these gas tactics on people, he like researched it. And he knew how to, like, handle it. So as soon as he recognized that this could be a threat, he, like, called, like, every hospital in, like, Tokyo and being like, hey, if you run into, like, the, if people come in here with these types of symptoms, it could be this gas and this is how you handle Damn. it. And he Whoa. saved a fuck ton of people by doing that. Whoa. And I was like, that's so cool. That's so that's cool incredible. that this guy, like, did that. I, his name is, did I write his name? Hiroshi Morita. Yeah. You know what? If Hiroshi started a cult, I join it. I, I was right? going to say, yeah. yes. That's yeah. charisma. That's, cool That's charisma yes. right there. That's a leader. Holy. And like there's leader. There's parts of this cult. Yeah, seriously. There's parts of this cult where like, you know, like we're not gonna tell you the whole story, but like they were like making meth. <laughs> you know, they were yeah. of course casually. Uh, casually they're making meth. Oh, what cult doesn't? There is also like a weird thing that I read here where like like all cults, like this one started off like with good intentions, let's just say, or it looks good. It's all spiritual, it's trying to help you, trying to better your mind, better your body, better your soul. But cult members paid money to drink the cult leader's blood. Oh. Because he claimed he was God. So And his bath water, right? Like yeah, just like water, gross like stuff. So gross. Right? That's um, so gross. Anyways, mm-hmm. yeah. That's ohm for you. A-U-M. Wow. Yeah. That was great. Thank mm. you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Someone else can say it. <laughs> That's fucked up. Stanley, what do you got? Oh, God. Okay. First, this is... This is fucked up. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm so glad we're we're navigating these faces because I'm feeling really good about. We got my the right crew to life. do it, right? You know, yes, hundred like percent. Generally okay, so... positive people handling a dark, <laughs> dark yes. material. Yeah, no one's saying like, "Wow, this is really great." I should take notes and actually start my own. So that's good. That's a good starting. <laughs> Step point. one. Yeah. Well, I didn't say I wasn't doing that. <laughs> But 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 Patricia, yours yours will be for good, so it's it's okay, it's okay. All right, so let's keep it international. Let's keep it international. There's this guy. His name is Claude Maurice Marcel Voril Vorion. Uh, he is a uh, French journalist, a race car driver, an author, an aspiring musician, somewhat of a comedian, a charismatic fellow who, in 1974, decided to create his own kind of miniature religion uh, called uh, Raelism. I am so excited. I love this <laughs> I love how to pronounce that wrong. How do you, so how do you spell, spell it? 
It's spelled R A E L I S M. R A E L I S M. It's realism. Is it realism? His name is Rael. So it's, yeah, it's Israelianism, Israelianism, or something like that. L- Lanily, <laughs> like sheep's wool. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. we'll get there eventually. <laughs> so, so Rael decided. So Claude, who is now known as Rael, what he believes is that aliens, who are known as Elohim, created humanity using advanced technology. Okay, so they, so we are made from aliens, and these Elohims have also created 40 basically hybrid figures who are kind of like prophets. So you got your Buddhas, you got your Jesuses, you got your Mohammeds. And the last prophet is Rael. He is the person who is going to bring Elohim back to us and bring us back to our true makers. Okay. So this started off in France. And became quite a hit, a huge force. And not only were they touching or dealing with religion, but they were actually doing a lot of science too. And one of their big things was cloning. So they claimed that they can clone the very first or create the very first human clone. Now that's a no go in France. So France said, hey, Rael, you take your Elohim followers and get the hell out of here. Sol I see. I think they said that in French. And so they thought, well, where else could we go? What's a place in the world that is that is French, that is outspoken, and that is open to people to have their own ways of life, of thinking, of creating? Quebec is where they ended up in. So they ended up in Quebec. And then in 1998, Rael, who is, again, you know, is the last prophet, is looking at ways of, you know, inspiring people to follow Elohim and save humanity. He thought he should establish an order, the Order of Angels, which is an all-female group who were trained to become Elohim's human wives. Okay. Oh my gosh! Just, just classic. Like, what do aliens need when they get on human uh, on Earth? They need some human wives, and they need to fuck. One, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I had wanted to make sure that that they were ready to do just that. Now, what is interesting too is members of Rael or Raelism. Realism, realism. <laughs> they would often gather naked and engage in what was known as sensual meditation, with the goal of achieving a cosmic orgasm. Okay, <laughs> so you can fill in the blanks there. Now, if there are approximately eighty thousand members of this group at its peak, and in two thousand and two, they claimed to have produced the very first human clone named Eve. This happened in the United States, I believe in Florida to be exact. Clearly, of <laughs> clearly no one had ever met Eve or hasn't met Eve since Eve became a human person. Um, what about Eve? What about Eve? <laughs> and what about Adam? Oh, who else is missing from this from this story? And then currently, Rael is living in Japan and he's surrounded himself with I guess a bunch of younger women because he needs to make sure that he is protected and ready for the coming of Elohim. So he's your classic asshole narcissist who decided to use this call to make money, to take advantage of women and to mislead people into science that is not truly science. So just your typical run of the mill. Very standard. Good old Claude from France. That being said, I do love this cult because they're slightly, you know, no one's out here getting hurt. They're unproblematic. Well. They're just like, let's, let's, <laughs> just, let's all just have lots of sex. Love, love rules. Uh, yeah. And everyone's yeah. a wife. We have UFOs. It's it's fun, light, and airy. Okay, we'll talk about it. We'll talk yeah, about maybe it. we need to talk about that later, Patricia, because I think some people are getting taken advantage of here. Uh, I will say the good thing about that cult is I think we all, everyone in life wants to experience one cosmic orgasm in their life yes we're all oh, yes. we're all looking for it and st- still looking still looking <laughs> sorry laura i know you're listening uh okay so <laughs> let's move on to uh patricia what do you got yeah that was great and i feel like after i tell you about my nomination you are going to agree that this is a light airy fairy cult and, and we're gonna stay in quebec mm. uh you know some some mm. canadian representation here <laughs> And I'm going to talk to you guys about the Ant Hill kids. Oh, okay. Question mark, question mark. Does no one know about this? I don't. Three question marks. I have no idea. Ant Hill kids? Uh, 
Yes, the Ant Hill Kids, really, really dark stuff. So again, trigger warning. But let me tell you about a man named. Okay, my my I haven't spoken French in uh, ten plus years, but Roche de Rio. Okay, we're just gonna call him Roach. I like how that's what he is. you're kind of looking at Stanley for approval <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he just gave a nod. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, sure. Oh my God, I was like, c'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good, good. We're we're not gonna try that again. I might call him Roach just after this because he's literally a Roach of a human being. But basically, our boy he drops out of school at a very young age when he's seven, teaches himself the Old Testament of the Bible, which isn't always the best way to learn the Bible as a 13-year-old. And he ends up converting from Catholicism to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ends up becoming a teacher of the pastor. I don't know what the exact language is, but he becomes like a, a leader in that church and he starts speaking and becoming a, basically a religious leader. However, he eventually takes a number of followers and breaks away from the church after there's some disagreement, I'm sure, in some of the stuff he was saying, because it was a lot. And he starts a commune in the woods. So I think you can see where this would go. The commune is named the Ant Hill Kids because of his vision of creating a society where everyone works together like ants. People could freely listen to his motivational speeches, they could live in unity, and they could be free of sin. So he declared himself a prophet using the alias Moish. I think that's like Moses. The only caveat, they were not allowed to remain in contact with any of their families or with the Seventh-day Adventist church. Now, he believed that the end of the world was imminent, and so the cult basically became obsessed with preparing for the impending apocalypse, which they believed was going to happen in February of 1979. During this time when they're preparing, he convinces eight women to marry him and bear his children, of course, and he eventually fathers 23 children within the commune. Life at the commune, however, was not the freedom and the unity that they were promised. Roche ended up falling into heavy, heavy drinking, which made him extremely controlling and very abusive. And so he then started to subject his followers to physical, sexual, and psychological abuse. And some of the punishments included like beatings, mutilations, torture. He would spy on people and then claim that God told him what they were doing. So, for example, if some if he got whiffed that somebody wanted to leave, he would like beat them in front of the fellow commune members. This is a bit graphic, but he would suspend them from the ceiling and pluck the hairs off their bodies. And as the time went on, the punishments just got really, really worse. He made people break their own limbs, shoot each other, eat dead mice. He would, yeah, he would make them cut off each other's toes to prove their loyalty. One of his wives left their newborn son out in the freezing cold just to like save the child from him. So he started claiming to be an actual holy being himself. And so he started to perform surgery on the sick members of the commune uh, to demonstrate his healing powers. And finally, he ends up performing a very brutal surgery. I'm not going to tell you the details. You can look it up, but it's, it's really gross. And basically, she dies the next day. And then he tried to convince his followers that he could resurrect her which he obviously did not. And they did some really weird rituals for that too. I'm not going to go into that. So you can look that up. Finally, in the late 80s, one of his wives actually manages to escape only after getting brutally attacked by him. Like think like missing pieces of her body. Even after, and then he gets arrested, obviously. But even after he was arrested, he still managed to father four children from conjugal visits. So he like had still somehow had wives that were still obsessed with him and then in 2019 he actually tried to sell his artwork through a u.s company that was uh it was a u.s space website but luckily like the correctional services in canada blocked that and said no he's not going to be able to make money off of his messed up like it was literally like artwork based on his murders or something like it was really really messed up oh my gosh um and then finally in 2011 he was actually murdered by his cellmate and this is like what his cellmate said So his cellmate stabs Roche in the neck with a shiv. 
Then he just walks up to the guard station and says, that piece of shit is down on the range. Here's the knife I sliced him up with. Here you go. Whoa. Like, yeah, super, super dark stuff. So what happened? Cold. So what happened to that guy? I mean, he ends up life in prison. Like, I the think other he's guy? still. Oh, the other yeah, guy the was other life guy. in prison anyways. Kind of yeah, thing. he was already in prison for he was already serving life in prison. So, oh, he, yeah, yeah. Because he. Right. He's that part. Yeah, yeah. He I'm was, like, no, I'm like I mean, MVP. Yeah. yeah. MVP. yeah. I right. mean, yeah. he was his cellmate for a reason. Yeah, he probably killed right? like five people. And like, yeah, uh, he wasn't volunteering. So he, he was also not better. But I mean, I think he was this, this guy was just so messed up. Right. Like he was still trying to get his followers messed to up come. to like like piss off another person who's bad like that's such a weird yeah like yeah the, like i'm in life in prison but this guy this guy's way worse than me so i'm gonna yeah. go kill him like what that happens a lot uh, in yeah. prisons like there's this there's a hierarchy, hierarchy of yeah. the mm. fucked up shit you do and yeah people get i wouldn't do well in a prison the time. oh gosh <laughs> it's just so bad in prison don't yeah oh my gosh uh well yeah. Thank you for that, uh, Patricia. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Usually, it's Let's funny. It. It's funny. Up. Usually on these podcasts, like it's always funny when it's just like, oh, time for some female representation. Time for some Canadian representation. And usually that's like, oh, good, good. We want this. And then it's like, ah, oh, man, Canada's obviously still is pretty fucked up too. But I don't know if this is like a win for Canadian representation. <laughs> it's, it's, <not. laughs> yeah. it's like it's like first the Drake Drake is losing his battle and now this. Like it's like oh, yeah. how low can we go? You know Super I mean? comparable yeah. for sure. I mean, this definitely happened first. So You're right. You're right. So it's getting better. It's getting better. We're getting, getting better. better. We're getting, getting better. better. If Drake's the worst it's getting, then I'm not then mad we're about good. That. <laughs> we're okay. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Patricia. <laughs> Let's go on to Steph, your second nomination. What do you got? Okay, so this one, we're going to bring it back to North America, and we're going to look into the Manson family cult. Ah, this there we go. has always been one that, to me, is very standard when we're talking and thinking about cults. We know about you know Charles Manson as being that career criminal who basically spent most of his life in and out of correctional facilities. I think half of his life was actually spent in jail, which is crazy. He really envisioned himself, though, as a rock star, and he sought to establish himself in the music industry. But when that failed, he decided to turn to other means of gaining influence and control, ultimately creating the Manson family cult. So emerging basically in the context of like the 1960s counterculture movement. So that was that free love, communal living, uh, rebellious kind of fam uh, feeling. Manson wanted to exploit the era's search for meaning and spiritual fulfillment. So he would find a lot lot of impressionable young followers who were primarily women, who were very vulnerable, often runaways, dropouts, that kind of thing. They just felt alienated from their families. And Manson offered them a sense of purpose and community. So he actually had this ranch called Spawn Ranch, which is where they uh, lived communally with each other. And he maintained control over the group through basically psychological manipulation, enforced drug use and a lot of sexual exploitation. It was very chaotic, drug fueled, and it just kind of further isolated all of those members from the reality and just kind of deepened their dependence on Manson. His ideology was a mix of pseudo-religious beliefs. So very racist. He had apocalyptic visions with Helter Skelter being the center of it all. So that was basically off of the Beatles song, Helter Skelter. He interpreted that as a prophetic message about this upcoming racial conflict, which kind of further fueled his delusions. He believed that this race war would lead to a societal collapse after which he and his followers would emerge as leaders. Now, obviously, None of that happened. But what uh, this all kind of culminated into were some very high profile murders, which we don't need to get into the details. I'm sure most people actually know what they are. But Manson directed his followers to the home of actress Sharon Tate. The following night, he directed them to Leno and Rosemary LaBianca's house. And they were very gruesome, the murders themselves. But interestingly enough, despite the fact that Manson was behind all of it, he never actually committed any of these gruesome murders. He just directed his people to do that. So the perniciousness of this cult leader being able to manipulate people to do some of the most heinous, disgusting, gruesome acts upon people, but never actually doing that himself, I've always found quite fascinating. 
Yeah. And then like life in prison and he died in prison and yeah. uh, still for a long time, even now, just like the whole Manson story is just so ingrained in in movies, in books and TV. Culture it's all everywhere. Of it, yeah. Yeah, like Tarantino did Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's yes. it's in there too. I was thinking of that completely. Entire, right. Yeah, like yeah. Um, it, it's a very well known one. And yeah, it's I mean, it's pretty messed up for yeah. sure. Yeah. Ooh, all right. What, what, was, was That's Manson, fucked up. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that is fucked up. Was was Manson killed by the same guy who killed the Ant Hill kids person? Because then he's a fucking hero. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just wondering. I'm just wondering. Just wondering. Oh, yeah. what a dream that would have been. <laughs> Maybe you call the prison on break and find out. Yeah. <laughs> That's the question. We're just doing this fun little pod here, and yeah. <laughs> I want to know this. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know we're in Canada, but any chance there was a transfer situation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say this cult in general is quite interesting because, A, it's super famous, but the other thing is that it came from not religion, right? Like, it's coming from a, a completely different thing. It came from, like, yeah. the Beatles song, came from, like, a race war that really never happened. Like, it's just, yeah. like, kind of festered in his mind, but that's it, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's interesting. I feel like it just goes to show you, too, like, the power of, like, charisma and oh, yeah. mm-hmm. strong leadership and also people's desires to be a part of something meaningful. Yes, Bingo. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah, why just... you're all here with me today. <laughs> no, no, no. How about we go into the final round of nominations? Things are getting juicy here. Ooh. I feel like we're giving the Cliff Notes versions of things. And yet we've been talking for like an hour, which is wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to like do it as fast as possible, but it's it's great. It's lots of lots of juicy stuff in here, including my last one. The Manson family was my next nomination. So Steph, you we've been on <laughs> the same, same wavelength here. So I'm kind of like pulling at the bottom of my barrel here. I have two that I want to, you know what? I'm going to go with this one because it's just slightly different than the, the old Messiah who's also trying to have sex with people. And well, I mean, there's kind of (laughs) actually, there's definitely that in this too. What am I saying? (laughs) Let's talk about it. (laughs) Let's talk. (laughs) Let's talk about, uh, what do they call it? This is the branch Davidians. Yeah. Damn it, Tongue. I know. know. We're on the same wavelength. You can take the other one. one. Wait, I know nothing about this. All right. I'm so excited. Here's the fast version of it. (laughs) David Koresh was the leader of a Christian sect uh, called, what is it called? The Branch of Indians. And he was expelled from the Seventh-day Adventist church as a young man because he was telling the pastor that he wanted to marry his 12-year-old daughter. Okay? So already, like, red flags everywhere. Um, (laughs) And then at this new place, the Branch of Indians, he uh, shared a special friendship and affair with the leader, Lois Roden, who named him as her successor, okay? So already this guy who failed at this other church, he's part of this, this, this branch Davidian is just like a subsection of, like, like it's, it's like a branch of the church, essentially. And basically with this guy, he declares himself as a messiah. Stop me if you've heard this before. But this one, he, he claims himself as not a perfect one. So already he's just like, you know, I'm a messiah, but also like, you know, we all are not perfect. I'm so relatable. Our, yeah, I'm so relatable. Also, I want to have sex with everyone, regardless of their age. And if they're married, again, red flags. It's a thing with him. It's just like underage girls, fair game, married girls, fair game. Gross, 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 gross. Uh, The thing about this one that I found really interesting was that there was a standoff that happened at Waco, Texas. And this guy here believed that the apocalypse was about to happen. So what do you do in an apocalypse? Get as much guns as you possibly can to Build stop Build a militia. It. That's right. <laughs> so he has a big following. He uh, assembles a, a vast amount of firearms, like a, uh, like a ton of it. And also, the, I should say, like, even though his members knew... His members knew that he was, like, trying to have sex with underage women. They knew that. But they were just like, uh, but God says it's okay. Mm-hmm. That's what his cult followers were saying. It was like, oh, well, he's a messiah, so he's allowed to get away with some of this stuff. Anyways, so the apocalypse was coming. This, this big standoff is about to happen. And the FBI gets involved, which is ridiculous. And this is why I think this is a little bit more interesting is because there is like an actual standoff that happens, a shootout. Mm-hmm. And it lasts 51 days. 
And we're talking about like just bullets everywhere. There's tear gas happening. There is a fire that just burns the building that they're standing off in. And that's how it basically ends. I'm giving you the short version here is that I think like 80, 80, 100 people died, uh, including children as well. Um, but the uh, FBI basically had to step it up a level to like try to like th- this was going on for 51 days. Uh, so this big standoff happened and it ended in a big ass fire. So that is the short version of that. You know, what's really <laughs> fucked up about this, too, is that like one, you have footage like we can actually we yeah. actually yeah. see the standoff. It's it's wild. The, uh, yeah, like you, you can actually watch all this. And then I'm literally Googling that after. Yeah, and then also with this event, uh, this event inspired Timothy McVeigh to bomb the to do the Oklahoma City bombings Oklahoma, yeah. in 1995. Oh, yeah. Right, so it's there's there's actually a, like a lineage of terror within the, this organization, and then also David when he took over the branch, he actually took over through force. So he yeah. did the standoff thing to the actual branch, the, the former branch leaders by coming with guns and bombs and the whole nine yards. And that's how he took it over. And then ironically, that also was his demise was obviously the military or the FBI mm-hmm. coming in. It's it's wild. This one's wild. Wild. Yeah, time. it is. And how many members were there was like 89 yeah, members it was 80, or something? 85, 85, 85? members okay. were on a compound. 76 died. Wild. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. And children, which is obviously yeah. the most yeah. terrible thing as well. And it's be- and it's believed that the fires were started by members because they were basically like they were in their compound and then they're like, listen, we're trapped here. We have no food. The, the FBI is surrounding us and they weren't believing this guy anymore. So allegedly people in the actual group decided, fuck it, let's just burn this thing down and yeah. hopefully we get to leave. And that's yeah. a long ass standoff, man. <laughs> like, yeah, it is. 51 days. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, I'm That's looking at a picture stamina. right now, and the fire is massive. And massive. the compound is also huge, too. Like, it is a oh, yeah. big, yeah. big fire. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's my nomination. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. <laughs> Stanley, what do you got? All right. So, I, I mean, I was going to go there. So, I guess I'm going to go somewhere else. Let's go with Twin Flames. Uh, nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So so it's a story of, of Jeff and Shayla who are in love, the men online, just a classic, you know, um, match made in online heaven. <laughs> boy meets girl. <laughs> boy meets girl. And what they did, what they, they started a blog called Awakened Intimacy. And then they started making YouTube videos in 2014 to really share their love with other people. And then they realized, oh, wow, like people are interested in how to find love because at that time, right, it was really hard to, to find love. And so they thought, well, how about we pitch this idea that every individual has a twin flame, which is like a soulmate, but on steroids, a really exaggerated version of what a, a soulmate is. And what Jeff and Sheila did was they would assign your twin flame. So if you paid them and joined their group, they would find you your twin flame. And all you had to do was get them to fall in love with you. Now, this could be someone that you knew, someone you didn't know. It could be someone from the group, someone from outside the group. They didn't really matter, but they would assign that. They would say, hey, this is your person. So again, people are paying for this, paying for this, and failing miserably because obviously that's not how love works. Janet Jackson did not sing about this. That's not how the, <laughs> that's not the way love goes. Okay? So then they realize, oh shit, okay, so people are going to realize that this isn't working the way we think it's working. So what do all great cults do when they are faced with financial trouble? They form a church. So they decided to create the Church of Union and label themselves Father Christ, Mother Christ, and their daughter, Princess of All Creation. And together... Wow, what a title. It's so beautiful. (laughs) It's so great. And together, they formed the supergroup known as Master Christ, Eternal Ruler of All Creation by God's Living Hand. Wow. Are you sure this isn't an anime? That's a mouthful. No, this, this is a real <laughs> thing, okay? Now, here's anime. where it gets somewhat interesting. So as as you get more and more members joining this thing, and they, they currently have over 67,000 members to this day. But as there are more and more people are joining, David, uh, Jeff and Shayla are realizing, oh, wow, like a lot of our members are quote-unquote heterosexual females. They identify as that. And so they're like, well, we have so many of these heterosexual female members in our group we are not able to form the twin flames that they actually want to form. So they decide, you know what? We're going to become less gender normative 
and instead focus on the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And they were saying that they established that didn't matter what your quote unquote gender was. All you need to do was find somebody who had the opposite traits that you did. So they would assign to these members, whether or not they were divine feminines or masculines, and then find the opposite for them to match. This mm. created a whole lot of fucked up pairings and also a lot of trauma for these folks who are, again, just trying to find love. So I'm going to leave it at that. It's not as violent or as i think that's um, okay though we don't need more violence yeah right no, we now. don't yeah, we've, we've heard a lot yeah <laughs> all right well leave it at twin flames that's that's my final nomination i think that's that's a great nomination stan and the one that like the thing that pops out to me with this one is that it's still ongoing right oh yeah and also that i mean i think it's just like the most because like, it's ongoing and people have called them a cult so many times and they're like but guys really we're not a cult yeah, and they keep yeah. they like literally have been called a cult, and they just keep saying no, 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 no. But give me your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wild stuff, preying on people's uh, love. But I mean, I guess people aren't dying, right? Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> silver lining, silver lining. Uh, no cosmic orgasm though with twin flames. I don't think. <laughs> uh, Patricia, what do you got? Um, okay, so I had originally really gotten obsessed with Nexium because at a baseline, I'm obsessed with them. So I'm going to go to, again, one of my bottom ones because I think a lot of them have been said. So I don't have it as detailed, but I know that even our summaries are not very summarizing. So this will be good. This will be fast. Nice, nice and snippy. I'm going to tell you guys about the Angels Landing cult. Have you heard of this? Okay. No. I love that I'm bringing some new blood yeah, to the table no here. Kidding. Yeah. Okay. So there's this a man, Lou Castro, who basically created a commune. This is somewhere in the States. And he brings together these women and some men. And what was interesting about him is that obviously, yes, he was manipulative, charismatic, you know, retained followers. But what was interesting about this group is that they didn't really follow, again, like a religious specific sect, but they really just followed him because he claimed to have these supernatural powers and that he was just three angels in one like these three angel beings were in him and gave him these supernatural powers and each angel helped him have different powers one helped him to see the future one was the angel of death so he could see when people were going to die and one just gave him like general understanding of the world like when to make good investments and things like that and so he convinced this group of people to live with him and they would buy land and obviously like live on that land and then move around basically somewhere i don't remember this was in the state somewhere what was also interesting about this group is like you know usually these communes they live very pious lives, right? Except this commune was all about luxury. They all drove luxury cars. All the children had like three plus horses. I don't know why they all needed all these horses, but these kids would just have all these horses. Um, unfortunately, you know, he did say that he needed to have sex with children, otherwise he would die, uh, which meant geez. that um, just when you thought like, oh, he's out here just handing out horses to children. Say, like, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, no. he's having sex with these horses. And I'm yeah. like, all right, that's a different <laughs> angle. I almost wish that was the case. You know, it would almost be this, you know, you're like thinking like, oh, he's giving horses to kids. Everyone's driving Lambos and luxury cars. But no, he was traumatizing everybody along the way. God the thing it. is, is he you know his predictions right like he was talking about how he was the angel like one of the angels inside of him was the angel of death so he would be out here predicting people's death but how did he keep the commune following him those people whose deaths they he was predicting obviously they had to die so he was killing them so there would be these my mysterious accidents that would happen so one of the women had been pushed into a pool and then like her, her daughter was in, I think it was her daughter, or one of the other children in the commune were there when he did it. They were inside the house and he was outside. He pushed this woman, Patricia, of course, into a pool and he himself is wet, drenched, comes inside the house and tells this little girl, Emily, oh, uh, 
wait 20 minutes, collect yourself, go throw yourself in the pool as well, get some water, and then call me in 20 minutes crying, saying that Patricia died trying to save you. And this girl is very little, right? So she's going to listen to him. And so he goes to literally buy a luxury car with another woman, Sarah. And she calls him in 20 minutes and is like, oh my God, Patricia died trying to save me. You need to come back. And so he would like manipulate these people to corroborate his crimes. And then anytime he felt like somebody might be fading away from them, from the commune and from him, he would predict their death and then make sure that they actually died. The interesting thing is he would also make everyone in the commune take out these insane life insurance so that when they did die, all the life insurance came back to the commune and specifically to him and that's how he was buying all these horses and luxury vehicles. Same insurance as the alien abduction yeah. insurance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I didn't expect life insurance to show up so much on this podcast, but this is very <laughs> yeah. interesting. Like, I gotta check my own life insurance see what's going on there. Seriously, what am I covered for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that was wild. Good for you, Patricia. You've been showing us some nominations that I have yes. not been seeing at all, so this Thank is... You. I knew some of these would come up, so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to learn about them. Let me try and uh, bring up some some out of the box ones. That, yeah. That's glad. very that's very NYU of you, Patricia, to do that kind of research. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Steph, uh, bring us home. Final nomination. What do you got? Okay, uh, we're gonna go to Jonestown. So once again, we have a charismatic preacher, uh, a f the founder of the People's Temple. So this was a religious organization that started in the 1950s, known for his progressive views, which just attracted a diverse following, of course. But over time, his leadership became more authoritarian, we could say, a little bit more paranoid, and he sought absolute control over his followers. As one would, I guess, if you're in this situation. The People's Temple was uh, formed basically in the 1950s to promote that message of social equity and communal living. In the 1970s, the group relocated to California, where it just kind of gained more political influence. But they decided to move to, uh, or his followers decided to move to Guyana in 1977, basically establishing a settlement called Jonestown. So life in Jonestown was characterized by hard work, communal living, and a strict adherence to Jones's rules and teachings. But the members were very committed to the cause, and they would often give up personal possessions and money to be able to support that community. Jones preached kind of a blend of Christianity, socialism, utopian ideals, that kind of thing, just promoting a vision of a racially integrated, classless society. He claimed to be a messiah-like figure, a vein that seems to be going through all of these cults. And he used supposed healing powers and prophetic visions to maintain control over all of his followers. Over time, his teachings became more increasingly apocalyptic and he emphasized the need to prepare for the imminent societal collapse and external threats, whatever that means. Key events surrounding this basically were the threat of government intervention. So because of that, Jones orchestrated a mass suicide by instructing his followers to drink a cyanide-laced beverage. Over 900 people died, including children, and this became known as the Jonestown Massacre. Huh. Yeah. Crazy stuff. I'm yeah. glad you nominated this one because this one is also like yeah, pretty It's an oldie and a goodie. Yeah. <laughs> it's an oldie. <laughs> it's yeah. oldie. <laughs> it's an yeah, oldie. Goodie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what else to add to that, but yeah, that's, uh, oh. that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Fucked up. <laughs> that's fucked up. I feel like we all need a hug right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> How about yeah. let's do that? Let's take our break. We have our list of 12. We're going to all hug each other on our spaceship and <laughs> pray to Xenu. And when we're back, we're going to rank top five cults. Uh, we'll be back, everyone. Hey. This thing on? Yes. Oniric. Notes to Oniric. Day one. By Tefer Troy, doctoral candidate. Alternative Narrative Traditions, Université de Montréal, October 12, 683. Oniric. Hello, Deirdre. I hope you're well. I'm recording this now because today's a big day. I'm meeting with a talking wolf after lunch. I'm a bit nervous about it. Oniric. 
A flame that rides the winds of worlds. A flame that seeks a single torch. The torch burns bright. The torch burns out. The flame remains and rides anew. Oniric. It's a dream quest. It's a grail quest. It's a fever dream quest. Oniric. Just say hi. Please. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. For fuck's sake. Hi, Deirdre. Hope you're well. You're well rid of this idiot. Oniric. Coming fall 2023 in the Podcaver and wherever you get your podcasts. Top five, top five, top five. All right, everyone. We are back from our big hug. We hugged for mm. a long time. Uh, and hard. And very hard. We realized that we are each other's twin flame, which is great Ooh. because now we don't have to pay anyone to find that out for us. <laughs> Thank so, goodness. Really happy about it. Uh, we I have too much school debt to pay up. <laughs> <laughs> we have a depressing, mostly, list of 12, but we knew that coming in. We are the right people to carry the one ring to Mordor. We are Frodo, you know? <laughs> we are, like, nobody else could do it but us to carry no, this burden. Exactly. So here we are to give you people at home some knowledge about kind of stuff that's happening in the world. A lot of this stuff has happened in the in the past, and some of it has ended, which is good. But uh, cults are everlasting, and some of them are still around, and there are thousands if not hundreds of thousands of cults out there, which is scary. So this is just a small snippet into uh, into that world here. So our nominations that we have brought forth today. Now we, on the break, we wrote like a one sentence description for you people at home to kind of remember what these are. I mean, we just talked about them and I'm having a hard time remembering which <laughs> Messiah and which bad person try to have yeah. sex with underage girl like it's there's a lot happening here extensive so some some common themes yeah if you need a <laughs> reminder i would just invite you to uh you know use chat gpt to or google to <laughs> to remind yourself or honestly just listen to the first half again because we're so good at explaining it uh we're better than ai what am i saying don't use chat gpt use us so here is our list of 12 we have scientology which is I wrote Xenu, Galactic Ruler, E-Meters, Thetans, and Very Pricey. Uh, the next one is Nexium, which was the pyramid scheme sex cult with a touch of volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, then we have Love Has Won. That's W-O-N for the people at home. I think at first I wrote like the number one. one. But that is... I wrote blue gray screen, but that's not right. Blue gray skin, skin, <laughs> mother God, avatar, mummified. Um, <laughs> that's the one that ends in that really gross mummy thing. That's not good. Then we have Heaven's Gate, which is a mass suicide with Nike shoes and alien abduction insurance to get on the UFO. <laughs> then we have <laughs> Ohm. Japanese gas attack on subways. That's our most normal description we've had so far. Of the cults. <laughs> then we have realism, which is alien gods, cloning, and Eve. The Ant Hill Kids, Darkest Timeline, Every Prison Needs a Hero, where that bad, already bad guy uh, just killed another more terrible bad guy, arguably. Manson Family, that's uh, the Tate Murders and La Bianca, The Race War. Once upon a time in Hollywood, you know. <laughs> then we have the branch David D- David Diddy David Deans. What? How? That is so close, time Davidians. <laughs> okay, that's what I said the first time, but then I got thrown off. Okay, standoff in Waco, Texas. Yes. Big burning building and a bad messiah. That's the one with the FBI, <laughs> as opposed to the good messiahs. Twin flames, which is your. Finding your soulmate for a price. Angels Landing. Three angels in one riding a Lambo. Free horses for <laughs> child sex. Oh my God. God. That's, that's a horrible, horrible I description. Know, it's a terrible description. Uh-huh. People uh-huh. have to know. Now re- people remember. They're like, free horses. Uh-huh. Which one is that one? Oh, um, that one. No. And the People's Temple, which is the Masser suicide which is not a word but we already have two mass suicides and steph nominated both of them this is the 900 people one and a big massacre with jim jones so 
we have a a, a really oh. dark list in front of us here, and I want us to go into stars. Okay, so I'm gonna go, uh, Stanley. I want you to star one that isn't one of your own for further consideration. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, the one that that made me feel really disgusting and horrific was the Anne Hill kids. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I I have to nominate that one. Okay, we'll star that one. And again, we are rating and ranking these on the most interesting stories, that kind of thing. Uh, Patricia. What do you got? Nexium immediately. I just, it's crazy to me that they had this whole business yeah. that was thriving and that celebrities were a part of. And you love volleyball, so. I, <laughs> I actually do love volleyball. It's the main takeaway of Nexium. So <laughs> it's not. Um, Steph, what do you got? I am absolutely going Scientology. This is still pervasive in our society today. People are still suffering from it despite the amount of screams and calls for its destruction and for it to be shut down and it just keeps living yeah yeah for sure and i'm gonna go with heaven's gate it's the smaller of the mass suicides which is a weird thing to say out loud yeah but i think this one i don't know there's just the the alien aspect of it is Mm -hmm. is the thing that like interests me because aliens you know okay so we have scientology we have nexium we have antel kids and we have heaven's gate starred is there any other cults and stories that we find are more interesting that we want to have further discussion about hmm. and it could be one of your own if you really want to fight for one of your own i have a weird <laughs> again like i said on the break like i have a hard time really fighting for any of these because i think they're I all kind of terrible yeah. uh some of them yeah. are funny like it, like scientology is really funny to me because mm-hmm. i think it's a big joke but the rest of them are quite uh sad awful yeah i'm yeah. gonna I'm going to go with Manson Family. I feel, yeah, there's an ick to this when I'm like, I really want to nominate these awful cults. But I'd say Manson Family, just because culturally, it's incredibly significant, not only in our entertainment, in our media, but also legally, it changed a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that it deserves a spot in the top five, as odd as that sounds to say out loud. No, 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 I completely agree. I, not to nominate my own, but I just think the Love Has Won story is so fascinating. The world that Amy created to the point that when she was like her health was deteriorating and she was sick, she was asking her followers to take her to the hospital. And they were like, no, the mm-hmm. cabal is going to get you. We're not going to let that happen to you. And they literally isolated her, which is interesting because usually the leader isolates their people. And the followers ended up isolating. Like, I just, the whole, like, she really created this world that people were so bought into. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for me, for me, it's Branch Davidian. I think that, that one, again, just, just watching, when I watched the documentary and just seeing the standoff and how long it lasted, there's, I mean, these are all really fucked up, but the fact that it lasted for almost two months and Mm -hmm. people were not only having to stick by this, you know, this cult, but their lives were literally at stake during that time. And it wasn't like a like a communal, not, not to downplay mass suicide, but but with, with the mass suicide, it's almost like they all agree that this is what we're going to do for this cult. Whereas with this scenario, like there was no agreement necessarily. It wasn't like they all decided, yes, let's go into this massive standoff with the government. They had no choice, literally had no choice after committing to this fucked up. Called so I, I think it's one that could be really explored a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my my one. And for me, I I don't think we don't need to. Yeah, I think these are all kind of messed up, and I I don't think we need to add another one just because. I mean, like I think the People's Temple is quite a popular one if we're talking about mm-hmm. like well known ones, but I don't think we need an another mass suicide <laughs> on this uh, list here. For representation, if you will, (laughs) for the variety of it all. The other one that I was thinking that maybe could be something was the Ohm one, uh, the Japanese gas attack, only because it is something that is from somewhere else could be interesting, Mm -hmm. you know, and for something to happen like that in Japan, I think is a a huge deal. And to give the death penalty to people is, is also a big deal. And I've heard, and I'm not sure how true this is, but I've heard that this is like 
a reason why they don't have like public trash cans in Japan. And again, I've never been to Japan, but like this incident really like rippled effect into being like, oh, we got to step up our game. So this shit never happens again. Wow. Mm. And, and I I like the, the, the good, at least the good part where that one guy helped save a bunch of people because he was knowledgeable on the gas itself. So that's kind of cool. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll start just to I say. would actually second that because I think it's so interesting the things that he convinced these people to do, like not only the attacks, because I feel like violence is sort of common, but yeah. things like drinking his bath water, like that blood. is just so interesting. <laughs> his blood. blood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, his blood. Yeah. Like how do you convince people to do things like that? Like you, it's so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll start Mm. and we'll see where we go. So the ones that aren't starred and we can discuss is realism. Again, alien gods, cloning Eve, twin flames, the online finding your soulmate for a price. We have angels landing. That's the riding a Lambo free horses. For child sex. (laughs) And the People's uh, Temple, which is the 900 People Massacre with Jim Jones. I think we're okay with leaving those to the side, right? Probably. The one that's kind of like, oh, this is like the the variety sake, but I don't think it's as interesting as these other ones, is Twin Flames, only Mm -hmm. because it's it's not the darkest one. It doesn't compete with the dark stuff that's going on here. So that's kind of, let's say, quote unquote, nice. But as a story, I don't, like it is interesting, but it compared to these other ones, I think there's more depth to it. So I'm not going to fight for yeah. it. And, and to be honest, like with Twin Flames, it's almost like somebody who is uh, of, I guess, of sane mind could do this, right? Could be like, oh, you know what? We're just going to pretend like our formula for love is the formula for love, and you must buy into it, right? It's not as uh, satanic as some of these other things, or mm-hmm. as really radical as some of the other ones too so yeah even though it's ongoing i think it's kind of like yeah yeah and i think like when we talk about interesting stuff like unfortunately some of the most interesting stuff is the most fucked up stuff so yeah Yeah. right yeah that's the thing that keeps us talking and being like wow cults are really weird (laughs) that they exist okay so with that said let me read you one more time the ones that are starred and we're gonna try to do locks okay so I'll, I'll read it once and then i'll read it again and then we'll do locks and i'll explain how that works so we have scientology ohm branch davidian nexium love has won anthill kids heaven's gate and manson family that's eight we need five so how lock works is i'm going to read it one more time and you're going to say if it's a lock or not everyone has to say if it's a lock or not If someone hesitates, then we just move on. If it's unanimous, then it's probably going to make our top five. Scientology, lock or no lock? Lock, lock, lock. Lock, Lock, yeah. Okay. Let's go to Ohm, lock or no lock? No No lock. lock. We can talk about it. We can talk about it. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Branch Davidian, lock or no lock? I lock it. No lock for me. Ooh. Ooh. I'll, uh, I know it's my nomination, but let's, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to see what our, what the other locks are first. Uh, Nexium. Lock. No lock. Ooh, I was going to lock that, but yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm on the fence. Love has won. Lock or no lock? Lock. <laughs> <laughs> That's I think, interesting. I think it is interesting. And it is. I could be convinced. I'm just not sure if okay. I want to lock it yet. Yeah. Okay. Ant Hill Kids. Lock or no lock? Lock. 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 Lock, lock. Yeah, lock. Yeah. Honestly, I, that's really messed up. Yeah. Don't it feel is, pressure. Don't feel pressure. No, no, no. Right it's it, it's okay. it's it is fucked up. <laughs> I'll lock it. <laughs> are we fuck, is it, Are we going based on fucked up or interesting? Uh, I think at this point it's a little bit of everything, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's got it's a gut reaction, which is what locks always are. Uh, Heaven's Gate, lock or no lock? That's a lock for me. Lock for me. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I okay. mean, I, 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 I can lock it. I can, can buy my lock. Okay. <laughs> I don't have money. Uh, I need more money. Give me horses? more money. <laughs> Any horses? No I horses, have, but there I is children. I there have. is aliens. So, um, okay. Manson family. Lock or no lock? Lock. 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 I, I would lock that as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's the classic. It's a classic. That to me is like our number five. You know. Yeah, it's a yes. classic, but yeah, you know, actually, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay, we did a good amount of work here. We have uh, three locks: that's Scientology, Ant Hill Kids, and Manson Family. The other ones that aren't locked are Ohm, Branch Davidian, Nexium, uh, Love Has Won, and Heaven's Gate. Uh, who wants to put one forward that they like make an argument for one or say that we can probably let go of one? Well, ne- Nexium for me is has to be a lock just by the sake of. 
you know, there there's three documentaries, I think, out there. It's very well known. It's a fucked up story. There's a Canadian angle to it as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> again, again, we don't need the Canadian representation. <laughs> no, no, we don't need it, but but if it's there, if it's there. Smallville was a great show. Like it was very like disheartening, like seeing the like seeing Lois be part of it for not Lois. What was her name? Lana be part of it for like a half a second. So anyway, I think next time should be part of this conversation. Um Okay, I kind of agree now, and I'm going to put in another little spin on that. So they apparently also claim that they can cure Tourette's. And the crazy part about it oh, is that why? people who have had Tourette's that go through their program are actually cured. Yes, that's right. So it has this like, el yes, it, there's so many videos. It's very oh, yeah. strange. I have right? seen some of that. That is... So it's almost like, weird. okay, we know it's a cult, but at the same time, they're teaching things that are true really helping people in certain instances well that's yeah. kind of the thing with cults right because they take a lot of inspiration from other religions and practices and even science itself to yeah. be mm -hmm. ingrained into their own religion and then that's how they're able to like plant the seeds of the darker shit right is because some mm -hmm. of yes. the stuff actually works I think it's I I think it's a super interesting story I I would definitely lock it yeah I think I think I'm gonna lock that too so really, at this point, we only need one more on this list. Oh, yeah. Unless we are really, people really want to fight for one over the other. Like, I think for me, it's probably Heaven's Gate because yeah. it's going to sound weird, but it's the one that has, like, there's a lot of mass suicide cults out there. And this one mm -hmm. fits this bill. And it's also the one with, I mean, I guess if you count Scientology as the alien stuff and I, I shouldn't like keep going back to the alien stuff with it, but I think the <laughs> heavens gate, it, it's, it's, it's built around this, right? Yeah. We are going to be yeah. saved by this UFO from this comet that's it's trailing behind this comet. And there's Luciferians, which are evil aliens that exist in this world. And we're trying to get away from that shit. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's, um, super interesting that's all my mm. thing is yeah. if we're talking about lore and interesting lore i just feel like love has won has some really interesting lore like all of these people hundreds of people literally believed this woman was jesus was marilyn monroe at one point and deified like who else has literally taken their leader's body turned it into a shrine and then continued to just hang out worshiping it <laughs> i bet you there's more than we think, and I'm not going to Google that. I'm not going to Google that. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> yeah. But I that, also feel like yeah. Ohm is also more interesting just because it's it's also like, a again, like the Japanese angle I think is really interesting because Japanese people, like there's there's a cultural aspect there that I feel like is also we haven't touched on. There's so much of conformity and politeness and being part of society that for a group of people to go so divergent from the norm like that i think is also really interesting that like we're not considering where i feel like north america it's not super surprising for those types of things to happen yeah like violence violent crimes yeah. in japan is way more rare than mm -hmm. like north america right so this this was and still is a big deal like and like for a place like Japan, like when this thing happened, it's not like the States where like this thing happened and they're like, we got to change stuff so this doesn't happen again. We're in the States where it happens and it's like thoughts and prayers, you know? Yeah. Literally, yeah, it yeah. could happen yeah. again, yeah. which it does happen again and again, right? Yes. Yeah. Whereas I feel like in Japan, it's just such an outlier story and... Yeah, I just think it's really interesting. And this man is so interesting. And I've seen videos on YouTube of like the following and the things that people would do for him. And yeah, just the fact that that would happen in a country like Japan with the values that they uphold, I think is also really interesting. Yeah. Steph, where where's your head at? I do agree with Heaven's Gate. I think that that is uh, a top five worthy as for sure. It is a mass suicide, but it is also a very small one, 39 people. I do like the alien aspect to it that is kind of different and interesting. I think that it just fits the idea of like your stereotypical cult. I also, because I watched mm. those videos today or like snippets of it, I found that like really interesting. Like the, like we already talked about it where like the people are explaining why they're about to go through what they're yeah. going through and like to send it to people knowing that that's what they're going to watch and be like, Hey, mm -hmm. by the time you're watching this, we're dead. 
Yeah. And you're going to find out that I was actually castrated and I chose to do that willingly. And then we all bought Nikes because they were, you know, on sale. They were on sale. That's so (laughs) wild. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, like, I think a lot of these were, but like Heaven's Gate specifically was like a huge target for like comedy skits. Like afterwards. Oh, huge. Like huge. It was just like. They were making fun of it left, right? Like an SNL yeah. type of thing would be, yeah. be like, let's just do a Heaven's Gate thing right now. And then, yeah, anyways. Yeah. Will Ferrell was uh, the guy. Was he? Yeah. Oh it's my great. It's, it was an actual thing. Okay. Okay. I saw it's a different a comedy skit. skit with people I didn't recognize from like, I don't know, the 80s or 70s. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Stanley, where's your head at? I mean, my head is now sold. If Will Ferrell was the guy, <laughs> <laughs> this is the no. winner. It's got to be Heaven's Gate. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. All right. I can take a gracious loss. How about, um, can we just say <laughs> that just loss. the, it sounds like the Branch Davidian love has won probably cut. Yeah. At this yeah. point. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. 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 I guess, I guess so. Yeah. Like we can, I mean, we don't have to argue all day cause I don't, I don't think we yeah. need to. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, I, I also be... don't want to be fighting for any calls. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I, know. No. I don't want to defend Except any calls. Except Ohm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's why I was gonna say it was like it sounds like Ohm or Heaven's Gate are the two. Like I could go either one, honestly. I think right now I'm leaning Heaven's Gate, but I could definitely. I mean, Ohm was my nomination. I could definitely see it on this list for everything that Patricia said and that I said too. So, is there anything on this list that we could see leaving to have both of them on, or is there only room for one? Well, if we if we establish that Manson's family is number five. Hmm. Then is that the one that we want to like remove to have both of those interesting those two in? Yeah, like is it actually very interesting or is it just iconic? Yeah. Is Love Has One Too New? No, that one's gone, yeah, right? Love Red is Red one's definitely. Oh, that yeah. one's yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. sorry. Uh, you guys are like Patricia's one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. she was still fighting for it. <laughs> I'm gonna start a cult against you. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's interesting. You know why? That might be that might be where we're at. It depends. Like, I'm curious to hear what Steph has to say about it. But like, for me, the Manson family, obviously super iconic, yeah. super well known. We know it from from everything that we mentioned, from fiction to movies to, to, to being parodied to, to everything, right? And like actual legislation and things have changed because of this. So obviously it is important. But I think, is it exciting for this group? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it is. Like, it's one of those things where I'm like, I respect... I quote unquote Don't. respect <laughs> that it's a cult. Oh, no. Wait. Wait. Right? Um, we're getting into the weeds on this one. I know. Man. That's why I have to like be careful what I say. Like, and if we're really getting to the weeds, I'm going to keep like circling. I'm like, well, it's the least interesting, but it's also the one that the leader isn't, you know, uh, <laughs> thinks he's Messiah or anything like that. He's just like, like he didn't build a religion. He's just like a, just a guy that like fucking had a really shitty past and, and ended up murdering or he'd even murder he he convinced other people to murder so that's yeah interesting too anyways i'll say i'll leave it at this i think manson family i could see it on the list but it would definitely be number five so if that's an indication of where my excitement lives then that's that's what it is fair enough do we want to get rid of it to, in terms of representation <laughs> we have two <laughs> We have two mass suicides, one being smaller, but the other being a massacre. Are we able to differentiate the scale of it and add it to the list because it's so different? <laughs> <laughs> I love how everyone's what? just dancing on eggshells to like not <laughs> <Yeah>. say. <laughs> what a mass suicide? Um, we've got Heaven's Gate and then yeah. the Branch Davidian. Oh, but I think Branch Davidian should. No, oh, that's gone too. Oh, we, that's yeah, gone too. Well, it's, gone. A, oh it's a star. It is a star, but we should. I think we are we're fine with leaving it too. So oh, I think yeah. I think if we take out Manson Family, we would have Ohm and Heaven's Gate, and I I actually think that would. I'm be okay good. with that. I think I'd be okay with that. Yeah, sure. I can yeah, go with I that. can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if if nobody that. else is excited to talk about the Manson family anymore, I just don't know what else to be there is to be said. Because like it's one of those things where I'm like, of course you're gonna say that. Of course you're gonna say that nomination. But there's not much more I haven't already like learned about it. Like sure. Some of these I'm like, wow, tell me more, even though it's twisted and messed up. Mm-hmm. All right. I think we got our five then. Um, yeah. Shall I read it to you? Yes. Yes, let's. <laughs> yes, let's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I missed you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to go with us for years. 
So <laughs> our five Scientology, Ohm, Nexium, Ant Hill Kids, and Heaven's Gate. That's five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What is number five? Ohm. Oh, Heaven's Gate for me. Interesting. Can you remind me? And I know it's the darkest timeline, but can you just give me a, just a bit more on on Ant Hill Kids again? Just like a, just a tiny bit. Uh. I know, I know, I know, I yeah. know. But you, just, you, I need to. We're in the ranking phase. This, now. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this man, right? He um, was the Seventh Day Adventist, but then he created his own commune in the woods in Quebec. Oh yes, yes. And yeah, literally convinced his people to be with him for years, even though he was like torturing them physically. Like had all of like had twenty plus children with the women. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, Dark, yeah. Darkest timeline. That's enough. Darkest yeah. timeline. Yeah. Yeah. There's more. I don't want to go into it. <laughs> can we? Can we do it the other way? Maybe because it no. seems like that's never happened, and I will yeah. refuse for it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> on this yeah, right. All right. Uh, we, we are on the pod cult here. Okay. The ranked right. cult right. is is it's sacred that number one is not spoken about until we get there to leave Sorry. a little bit of Okay. Right. Supreme yes. Leader, I am sorry. I will okay. never do that again. Okay. Number- You're going to be labeled a suppressive person, Stanley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are going down to level two officer now. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. All right. Ohm. Ohm number five. Yeah. I, I think I see it. Yeah. Okay. I think, okay. I, I think if so, If Heaven's too. Gate gets to be number four. <laughs> <laughs> the other three are just top three for me. That's what a, a hater. I... I so the other know. three being Nexium, Scientology, and Ant Hill Kids. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What are you? Can I be can I be a hundred percent honest with y'all? Of I I don't find Scientology to be as interesting as a cult as <gasps> These other four. Wow. It's because you went to the wow. fucking first lesson. You know what? <laughs> you went I to the introduction. Immediately I bought in. <laughs> like I, immediately I slipped. I was like, yeah, actually, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's just like, it just is. Like, I think I think similar to the Manson family story, it's like we all know about Scientology so much. It's so commercialized that like Anne Hill Kids hits me. I think Scientology doesn't hit me like that anymore. Sure. It's like basically a religion mm-hmm. now. Like so I mean, many it's people pitch is follow a religion, it. Yeah. Scientology. I was going to say Scientology to me is, is there three. Yeah, I, I could do that. Okay, like Heaven's Gate that. number four and then Scientology Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know yet. Whoa. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Well, I'm upset. Yeah. So Scientology can be our three. Um, okay. Yeah. Which I'll yeah. take. I, I'm fine with that. And, you know, like I, I somewhat agree with you, Stanley. Like I think... Like it is talked about a lot and made fun of a lot, but I like it for a few different reasons on this list. One is it's the most harmless physically to somebody. And I, I find it it is the most enduring of these cults that are that yeah. is on this list. Like it is the thing that's been around for a long time and I think should have been stopped like a long time ago. Long time ago. And yet yeah. new celebrities and new yeah. people keep putting their fucking money into it and I it know. just keeps going even though the guy's dead now <laughs> like Elrond Hub- like yeah. like he's is he dead he's dead right he's pretty sure he's dead oh he's dead <laughs> but they they expect him to come back that's the whole thing they literally have an apartment like a, a home set up for him with his favorite food his favorite flowers his favorite smokes his favorite slippers just waiting for him to circle around and finally find them again. And they've got like crop circles outside of this place so that he knows where to look for them. They expect him to come back. Like they're deluded. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's why I think it's, it's, it's not as I guess uh, cultish is I went to the Scientology, the church of Scientology and it was hilarious. Whereas if I went to any of these other things, it would not be funny. There'd be no bueno. We wouldn't be laughing about it. I'd be like, oh, fuck. Like, I, this guy has alien life insurance. <laughs> yeah. I, yes. guess, I also feel like there's this, like, mainstream element. Whereas I think in my head, when I think of a cult, I literally think hoods in a dark room, secretive. Mm. At, whereas now Scientology has not, like, all of their shit has just come out. Like, everybody knows mm. everything about it. We all laugh uh, about it. It feels like a, you know, like I think, this big joke that we're all in on. I think that that's the thing about Scientology is that they're hiding in plain sight now, right? Like yeah. they, that I think in that way it's even it's it's quite scary <laughs> in a way yes. that people have accepted it to such a degree cuz if we are really going to twist this into the darkest part of it is that these people truly gouge yes. people 
for their money and the friends and families of that person yes. of their money. And people have lost their spouses, their children, and mm-hmm. like people like Katie Holmes and um, the other wife of Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman. Like <laughs> they were forced to be in it because of Tom Cruise, but they didn't ever really want to be part of it. And like, mm-hmm. I remember like Katie Holmes, there was a story of just like, she didn't want her daughter to be part of it either. Right. And like, it's just one of those things that like, if one person's in it, you're trying to drag your whole family in it as well. And like, again, if we're talking about some nefarious shit, like the whole Danny Masterson stuff, mm. uh, the guy mm-hmm. from that semi show has since has ton of bad shit come out about him. Right. Scientology and the church of Scientology swept a bunch of that bad shit mm-hmm. under the rug to protect him for years mm-hmm. up until recently. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, I think that's bad too. <laughs> yeah, uh, right? I agree. But like, I'm not going to fight it more than three. I'm just defending it spot on three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I hear you now. I think, I think I'm okay with them, with it being three and then heaven's, heaven's gate four. four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think at this point, fine. <laughs> Cause if it's Patricia wanted heaven's gate five, and then four. It's definitely not going to two, so it has no. to go. Yeah. Four. No, yeah. no way. Yeah. <laughs> that I will fight yeah. for. <laughs> so number, what's number two? Nexium. Nexium. Oh, Sten, I can no, see your no. face. I I agree because for me in 2024, and Hill Kids, not knowing about it, it fuck. I'm gonna have nightmares about that. Yeah, so. seriously. Yeah, I think I agree because like that's the one that yeah. like affected me the most as well when yeah. Patricia was telling the yeah. story, but also one that all of us have never heard of. Yeah. And like I've done some, I mean, it's been 24 hours, but <laughs> I've done some <laughs> extensive research and Googling <laughs> <laughs> on some cults and not once, I don't think, unless I was just skimming too much. I didn't see Ant Hill Kids on that list at all. No. So like that's mm-hmm. And this crazy. guy is some Rasputin looking asshole man. Like for some reason, like that just makes it even worse. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I found yeah. it in the last minute too. I was like, holy shit, how does nobody know about this? This is oh, it's those devious. NYU. It's the NYU, it's the NYU uh, yeah, NYU research and you. skills, right? <laughs> and also it's, it's kind of cool that our top two have Canadian ties. Isn't that cool? <laughs> We did, it, Joe. We did it, Joe. We did it, Joe. That's pretty cool, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Let me read you the list. I think we have it, right? Number five, Ohm, the Japanese gas attacks on subway. Number four, Heaven's Gate, mass suicide with Nike shoes and alien abduction insurance to get on the UFO. <laughs> Number three, Scientology, Xenu, Galactic Ruler, E Meter, Thetans, uh, very pricey. Nexium, pyramid scheme, sex cult with a touch of volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> that part is the most like it's, so good. <laughs> it's not yes. even that important to any. Other. It is. It is. It's so, so important. important. It's yeah. so important. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. And number one, Ant Hill Kids, which we won't say too much, except it's the darkest timeline. Yeah. And uh, yes. every every prison needs a hero. Uh, that's you that's know, yeah. good thing that guy fucking <laughs> ate it at the end. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. Did. he did. He did. Yeah. I have a question for you guys Absolutely. that I wanted to ask at one point and I just didn't have the opportunity to. Do you think you are more likely to be a cult leader or a cult follower? Well, no. I, I was a big fan of Kanye West, so I'll say cult follower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would say I'm a I'm a deep down I think I'm a leader, but I'm actually a sheep. So I'm a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'd like to think that I'm a lot yeah. smarter than that and that I can sniff it out, but there's just there's no way. Yeah. If it's packaged right, I think that I would be very susceptible. One hundred percent. I feel like I'm the target audience for Nexium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Young professional. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I you know what I love? conferences like i'm just so ready to upskill myself well, yeah. careful. and i love volleyball <laughs> like it's just the perfect combination wow. i was gonna say do you enjoy a plenary speaker <laughs> <laughs> I, my phone ready to take some notes <laughs> oh god that's so funny okay. i hate those things except for the Me free too. food for the free food i'll i'll go but i will not pay attention <laughs> <laughs> do you know i have voluntarily created powerpoint presentations of the things i learned at the conference i went to so that i can share my learning i just that's Whoa. just you are um yeah above and beyond above and beyond <laughs> thank you but this is cult leader material so yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait yeah maybe i'm actually a cult leader type 
Let's go into honorable <laughs> mentions here. Here are the uh, some of cult, some of the cults out there that ex- there's a ton out there. There's a ton, but we're just going to give oh you God. some quick ones that are interesting. We don't have to say anything about them. We'll just shout them out. I'll do some Wikipedia links for the honorable mentions later. But let's go, Stanley. How about you just list any other honorable mentions that you have on your list? Well, the only one that I think I mentioned, to be honest, is uh, Bikram Yoga. Bikram mm. Yoga was going to be my yes. interesting yes. one. But yeah. Oh, I should have mentioned it. Darn. You should. Okay. Oh, you. That, oh, it's okay. So it's okay. You just did. You just <laughs> did. One. There you go. There you go. Well, yeah. I, I know I said we wouldn't do this, but what's your like <laughs> five, like what your one sentence uh, log line of, of that? Hot yoga class turns into hot sexual assault mess. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Hate it already. <laughs> uh, Patricia, any uh, honorable mentions that you just want to shout out there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Unification Church. Think mass wedding ceremonies, Messiah tasks with world peace, political involvement. Happy science. Uh, mm. Thinking about happiness through science. Okay. Also political affiliations. Pastafarianism. Not an actual cult, but it's just a really fun movement uh, where they <laughs> they worship the flying spaghetti monster. Google it. Then there's the guy who made his daughter's dorm into a cult. Lawrence Ray. Search him up. Wow. Damn. Wow. Yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. Steph, what do you got? The Rajneeshis. Yes. So that's what yes. I was that was gonna I thought someone was gonna bring this one up, but no. Yeah. Me too. Indian Godman philosopher, mystic, founder of the Rajneeshi movement. They moved to like some part in the States and they had like a commune and it was uh the whole thing. And that's the that's the last one you got here? Yeah, I didn't get too much into the the details on that one. It was one of those, okay, I'll get to it if I need to. <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries. Okay, I think we basically hit all the cults that I wanted to talk about as well. Although I did write a few things that cults that aren't really cults. I had this list here. Um, so I said people who have air fryers, um, <laughs> Apple users, <laughs> Improv people who do improv. I'm two of those things, by the way. <laughs> that Jared Leto cult. That uh, do you remember when he like invited people on an island to like do hippie shit yes. with him and like yoga yeah. and stuff like that? That was fucking weird. That was fucking weird. <laughs> and then I didn't know where to put this, but Laura, five minutes before recording this, she's just she just said something to me, and she's like, "Put this in the episode." And I'm like, "I don't know where," so it's gonna just go here. From the the wise words of my wife, Laura Gordon, you can't spell culture without the word cult. That's that's all she left me with. That's all she left me with. So think about that a little bit. (laughs) We're all part of a cult in some way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. She should have been on the cast, but no doubt. This this would make her way too sad. So (laughs) to research. Uh, That's it for today's episode. But before we go, of course, we have to thank my guest today, which I'm so happy we got the gang back together on this one. Stanley, Steph and Patricia. So happy to have you and for us to do this together. Does anyone have anything to plug these days? Let me know. Stanley, I know you're doing stuff. Yeah, I, I do have something to plug. Usually I don't have anything to plug, but now I can plug mm-hmm. this. So uh, I have a podcast. It's called I've Been Meaning to Listen to That, where we do just that. We listen to albums that we've been meaning to listen to and use it as a use it as a conduit to learn about each other and our awesome guest. Uh, we cover um, albums and artists from every era, every genre. We just had a musical month. We just did Beyonce's country album. So check us out. Uh, you can follow us at IBMTLTT. That's IBMTLTT on Instagram and TikTok. It's a really fun podcast, and I'm happy to be on it. Wow. I'm I don't sorry, invite you, you on my own podcast, and you make your own. Yes. <sighs> I should have uh, got you to level four it's, officer sooner. It's a, it's a, bran- it's a branch. It's, it's a, a branch. branch. Yeah, it's a branch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds awesome, Stan. That's that's really great. Patricia, Steph, anything to plug, uh, whether it's a personal thing or if you just want to, I don't know, plug something positive, maybe a TV show, a movie. I know, Steph, you baked goods for a while. Anything. Yeah, so we've still got this uh, Life's Little Treats business. So if you want to see some tasty treats, you can go onto Instagram at Life's Little Treats 1 funny story on that one we literally had life's little treats and then we lost the password and we couldn't get into it and we begged instagram for it back and they wouldn't give it to us so now we're one that's so fun oh my god that's hilarious 
is that is incredible. <laughs> like, Who's this other story, asshole though? who took it? Oh, it's me. <laughs> it's That's a great story though, because now I'm never gonna forget. Like yeah, I'm always yeah. gonna be Brilliant. like, life's little treats one. Yeah. But this one the number one and not like it's the number one, won. not spell it up. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Patricia. I wish I could say, yeah, I wish I could say I had interesting things going on, but I'm in a rest season at the moment. You deserve it. So, nice. I, yes, I do deserve it after crushing it in school. Uh, so, I mean, if you want to see me continue to just like basically couch rot, always you can follow me on Instagram at uh, at p a h t e e e e. I'm also reading a lot, so the book series I would recommend for my sci-fi lovers out there is the Red Rising series. So good literally like i'm getting gearing up to reread it i'm obsessed with it and for any harry potter fan fiction lovers you need to read manacled it's so good so that's my life these days <laughs> okay nice. and you can find uh, patricia at your nearest uh work conference probably yeah, yeah. <laughs> follow me on linkedin patricia I do I'm at the registration it. table yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny for myself you can find the rest of the shows in the pod cavern at www.podcavern.com check out all the shows in the pod cavern like subscribe review rate share it around share the love and i think that's it for today's episode so i i think we need another hug before we leave today uh people at home you've listened to really heavy podcasts hug your loved ones as well but for ourselves the the four of us are going to go off and have ourselves a little cosmic orgasm and we'll see you next time on another episode of ranked <laughs> bye everyone <laughs> bye <laughs>